the amendments uh, have been withdrawn. And interesting, do you think that the liberals came back and said, well, we made a, a big mistake, we reached too far, and we kind of got caught? Uh, do you think they would say that? Uh, or do you think maybe they would say, maybe we just didn't uh, spend enough time listening to Canadians? Well, uh, we'll let the liberals speak for themselves yet again. Violence, but on those particular amendments, I will acknowledge there was not enough consultation. There were enough, not enough conversations with Indigenous peoples across the country, and that's why we're committed in our committee, and I look forward to working with the Honourable Member, to listening to the concerns and to making sure that our legislation is one that will protect public safety and keep Canadians safe. Bravo. Apologize. Can you folks explain to us why you withdrew the amendment? Thank you. Well, listen, we've been listening to Canadians. We want to make sure that we get this legislation right. See I'm not asking you about the legislation. I'm asking you why you withdrew the amendment. The Conservatives are saying it's evidence that what you have been saying, what the government has been saying for months, uh, that this didn't affect hunting rifles, that that was a lie. What do you say to that? Well, listen, I've been, I've been catching some of the tweets out there. I, no, we... Listen, we're working across party lines to make sure that the bill that comes out is the right bill. We're working across party lines. If you were watching what was going on in there, you saw that there was collaboration with all parties. I, I appreciate that this is a politically touchy subject and that there's a message you want to get to Canadians, but why withdraw the amendments if there wasn't something wrong with them? Because we want to listen. Wow, what genuine people. They just, they just want to listen a little bit more. Maybe they just didn't listen hard enough. Well, speaking of listening, I don't know if you guys remember the video of when I did my appearance at Public Safety Committee, the committee that these two folks are on. Do you remember how that went? Maybe let's have a, a little reminder. Uh, this democratic government is ignoring the perspective of hundreds of thousands of Canadians uh, who have concerns about legislation that disproportionately affects them and you guys can't even get a meeting. That's, uh, that's very disturbing to me. Uh, your vice president of public relations, uh, Tracy Wilson, said on September 21st that she is the gun lobby. Does she speak for your organization? I would say that's a correct statement. We that's are the gun statement? lobby. Yeah. Okay, so would you agree with her statement? And by extension, do you believe that it is the view of all of your members that ha 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 ha, we've survived seven years of the most corrupt, divisive, hate inciting failed government of the history of our country? That's a pretty accurate statement. I just get confused because your organization talks about firearm rights. And I have been subject, I see Ms. Wilson is here, to many of your attacks. So, yeah. so you, sir, then have come here with a political agenda of your own, is that correct? I'm coming here to defend the property and, and my dignity as a Canadian citizen, actually. Uh, I see. And does, d does defending the property and dignity of yourself um, involve the harassment of other individuals, like my colleague Ms. Demoff? Well, I would hope that your defense of this bill, it consists of more than mean tweets. Your vice president have appeared to have a very, very good grip on delivering mean tweets. They're in response to the abuse that we've taken for seven years. So, I don't know. You can, you can put it all on my shoulders. I can take it. I don't know if you remember that. I sure did. They, didn't, they weren't in the mood to listen or to have a reasonable conversation. They wanted to fight about Twitter or our name or painting themselves as victims every time you try to disagree with them. It's, it's an attack on them. Anyway, these people make a mockery of the whole process, and, uh, and it's a, it seems to be a joke to them. But that meeting probably cost the taxpayers $50,000. Anyway, it's a little bit cynical. I don't like bringing up how politics really is in Canada um, too often because it's, it's depressing. But I just want to make sure that, uh, that you guys understand that we do this so that you, uh, you stay motivated. Because the only way to stop these people from doing these things is to do exactly what you guys did, stood up, fought these amendments, and this is your victory. It wasn't, you know, we did some organizing, we provided some tools, but without 50, 100,000 people standing behind us and the other organizations too, there would have been nothing, right? We're insignificant by ourselves. So anyway. If you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.